Okay, members of council, this meeting is now resumed. Before we, be, members, before we return to the mayor's key item, I will now take the release of member holds. Councillor Aljamari. I believe this is a reopening, uh, Speaker, that in accordance with the provisions of Chapter 27, Council Procedures, City Council, which, reconsider which item, the item. I'm sorry? Which item? Reconsider the item NY22.25. Oh, okay. It's the liquor licensing for the North York Community Council. Okay. Okay. On favor, <coughs> carried. And that um, we amend the North York Community Council recommendation one by adding the following new part. Temporary liquor license extension for the Latvian Canadian Cultural Center. You'll find the address up on the screen and the date is August the 6th. Okay, so the amendments on the screen on favor, carried. Item is amended on favor. Carried. Councillor Lee. I'd like to, thank you, Madam Chair. I'd like to introduce. Uh, yeah, uh, we can't do that yet because we don't have tw uh, 30 members. I mean, uh, a motion without notice? Yeah, need but I need 30 members. members. We don't have 30 members. Thank you. Um, all right. Okay, so let's simply we have come. 30. We have 30 now. Do we have 30 now? Okay, why don't we have a quorum call? Press your buttons. Let's see how many people are here. Councillor Parks, please. Councillor Cressy, please. Councillor Mahavik, please. Councillor Pasternak, thank you. <laughs> Councillor Robinson, please. <laughs> Councillor Mahavik, please. Speaker, there are 31 members in the chamber. Quorum is present. Okay, good. So now we can, um, I, I, I already went through quick releases. We're now doing, we have a number of members' motions that now that we have 30 members, we can introduce them. So if I can ask the clerk. Councillor Layton. Uh, thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Um, this is a staff recommended uh, a technical amendment for a zoning amendment bylaw for 45 Dover Court Road. Okay, on favor, carried. Councillor Fragadakis? Uh, yes, this is a, a, a reopening actually of an item from earlier this year for 550 Bayview Avenue, the uh, Evergreen Brickworks, it's alterations to a heritage property and it's urgent because they're trying to finish the exterior work um, and, the, and the new washrooms prior to their fall events. Okay, on favor, carried. Councillor Holliday? <coughs> I do have a motion to introduce, Speaker, thank you, uh, that I be permitted to add to the agenda uh, an urgent motion without notice on 19 Glen Agar Drive zoning bylaw amendment and draft plan of subdivision applications, sanitary sewer upgrades. Um, this is urgent uh, because the funds are required and it is a reopening to confirm a condition that was imposed when we first put this through. Thank you. Thank you. On favor, carried. Councillor McConnell? No. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Yes, uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, this is the uh, temporary North Market uh, replacement um, uh, um, 
and HUD, whatever. Um, and it's, uh, it has a temporary uh, zoning bylaw, but that comes out um, in, uh, in June. So we're gonna start a new process just because we think it'll be another three years that the, uh, that the uh, farmers will be in this. So I'd appreciate um, that we would have support for moving forward on this. Thank you. Thank you. On favor, carried. Councillor Carmichael Grepp. No, Thank you, Madam Speaker. Speaker. This is uh, an OMB um, motion. Okay. All in favor? Carried. Councillor Cressy. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, this is urgent as it is a technical amendment to correct the bylaws that the developer needs corrected in order to proceed. Okay. On favor, carried. <laughs> Councillor Grimes. <clears throat> thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, an urgent motion to be added with regards to uh, Lakeshore Boulevard West. Uh, the Toronto mural art, the community is waiting for those funds to be released. Great. On favor, carried. Pardon? Councillor Layton. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Um, this is a matter at the OMB for four, 14 Rolyat Street. On favor, carried. Councillor Perks. Thank you, Speaker. I have a, an urgent uh, motion regarding a liquor license application at 1731 Bloor Street West. On favor, carried. Councillor Cressy. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. This is urgent as a liquor license application and the deadline for objections is before the next council meeting. On favor, carried. <laughs> Councillor Lee. Thank you, Madam Speaker. This instruction of uh, to request attendance at the OMB okay. for uh, community adjustment uh, view. Okay. On favor, carried. Councillor Cressy. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. This is another one. It's a liquor license matter. The deadline for objections is before the next council meeting. Fresh Canadian seed. What is that? On <laughs> <laughs> favor, carried. Councillor Bailao. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. We, I have a motion that I'd like to uh, introduce uh, so that we can uh, send some uh, important and pertinent information to all our MPPs. On um, favor, carried. Councillor Cressy, another liquor license? I, this is urgent. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, sorry, this is not a liquor license. No, uh, not. This is urgent as a settlement has been reached uh, on a development site within the ward. On favor, carried. <laughs> Councillor Fillion. Uh, this is a, uh, a report so that, that allows us to accept a large parcel of land for free. Wow. Now, how can we say no to that? On favor, People carry. Councillor Cressy. They're dying to give us this land. Uh, thank you. This matter is urgent as it pertains to a potential settlement that's before the Ontario Municipal Board for a development site in the ward. Welcome to the Joe Cressy. On favor, carried. Councillor McMahon. 
we, we're trying to figure out the public trust number. All right, this is um, so urgent because it is a technical amendment for my wonderful Woodbine so uh, bike lanes going in like, early July. On favor, <laughs> carried. <laughs> Doesn't Councillor Fletcher have one? No. Would I take one? Yeah, yeah. We're, we were just going to the member's motion at this point. So that's fine. So, Councillor Fletcher, quick release. I'm going to make everybody very happy. Um, page 3, 25.5, 2017 Toronto Community Housing Corporation refinancing through Canada Mortgage Housing Corporation payment plan. I've had my questions answered and I'm releasing that. Okay, on page 325.5, Councillor Fletcher is releasing all in favor. Carried. Page 4. 25, AX 25.15, Toronto Water 2017 Capital Budget and 2018-2026 Capital Plan Budget Reallocations. I've had my questions answered. I'm releasing them. Okay, on page 4, AX 25.15, Councillor Fletcher is releasing all in favor. Carried. Is that it? No, nope. same on page four, Board of Health, HL 19.8, 2017 Student Nutrition Program Service Subsidies. I've had, I just got some great information from staff that I was looking for, and I can release that speaker. Recorded, recorded vote. A recorded vote. Councillor Peruzza, please. Councillor Layton. Councillor Bailao, please. And Councillor Mallow. Councillor Crawford and Councillor Robinson, please. Councillor Bailao, please. Councillor Crisanti, please. The item carries 38 to 1. Releasing GM 20.3, Toronto, Trans Toronto Transit Commission occupied properties designation of a portion of the premises as a municipal capital facility with many wards. And there is a supplemental report that I have to move. And with that, I would move that item. So. Okay, so um, Councillor Fletcher is releasing on page 5, GM 20.3. On favor? Vote. Recorded vote. What's with you over there? <laughs> Councillor Peruzza, please. Councillor McMahon, Councillor Wong Tam, Councillor Davis. Councillor Fillion, please. Councillor Crisanti, please. The item carries unanimously 39 in favor. Page six. Page six. LS 19.1, amendments to chapter 693 signs, article two, election signs, and Councillor Palacio has a uh, motion Oh, it's being held, so I'll continue to hold that. That's okay, fine. thank you. Page seven, and it's PE 19.6, waiving park permit fees to waive the flag. Move that, release that. On page seven, you which can't I hold that, and I'll continue to hold it. That's fine. You'll continue to yep. hold it? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you. Oh, okay, I thought it was with your member's motion. Councillor Layton? No, my apologies. Um, it's on page seven, PW 21.8, 10-year cycling network plan, 2017 bicycle lane installation. <coughs> I'll just uh, release the hold. Okay, on page seven, Councillor Layton is releasing PW 21.8. Did I hear somebody say hold? Oh, recorded vote. I mean, I'm speaker.
Councillor Peruzza, please. Councillor McMahon, Councillor Wong Tam, please. Councillor Pasternak. Councillor Crisanti, please. The item carries unanimously 39 in favour. Okay, Councillor Layton. Thank you very much. On, I have a second item on page 8, uh, EY 22.36. Runway Rehabilitation Program at Pearson Airport. I have two motions. One, uh, motion A, is to change, essentially change the words Etobicoke, York, and insert the words Toronto. My understanding is uh, from the mover of the motion at committee, this was uh, the intent, but Toronto and East York Community Council, or Etobicoke, York Community Council didn't have the jurisdiction, so this is just applying it across the city. And then B is uh, on the advice of my, uh, my, my colleague, Councillor Shiner and Councillor Matlow. This is actually calling for a report back of a motion made by C Councillor Matlow and, and Councillor Robinson um, four, six years ago, uh, asking for a meeting between the city manager and NABCAN and the Federal Ministry of Transportation. <laughs> my apologies to the current city manager as uh, he wasn't around at that time, but uh, we'd be looking to hear of the results of whatever was said at that meeting. <laughs> so everybody's okay. So I yeah, just actually, give it a shot. Give it actually in Etobicoke. I think we thought that the planes were just in Etobicoke. No. <laughs> okay. So on the amendment, on favor, recorded. A. Councillor Carroll, please. Councillor Bailao, Councillor Perks, Councillor Peruzza, Councillor Wong Tam, and Councillor Pasternak, please. Councillor Burnside, please. Motion A carries unanimously 39 in favor. <laughs> okay, amendment number B, on favor, recorded. Okay. Councillor Peruzza, Councillor DiGiorgio, Councillor McMahon, Councillor Wong Tam, Councillor Pasternak, please. Councillor Peruzza. Councillor Burnside, please. Councillor Crisanti, please. Councillor Crisanti, please. Councillor Crisanti, please. Part B of the motion carries unanimously, 39 in favor. Item as amended, on favor, carried. Okay, so if we can put the speakers list up on the screen, please. Uh, questions? I believe that Councillor Campbell was next. Councillor Campbell. Thank you. Just a few quick, uh, easy questions. Uh, when is the first meeting of the interim board? Through the, sp uh, through the speaker, our intent is to have it at the end of June. End of June. And how often will they be meeting? Once a month? At least once a month. And, for how, and, and when will the official board be put in place? Through the speaker, the hope is to bring that in, Q in Q4 to council to approve. Okay, to, but okay, that's Effect, for, effective. They'd be January first of twenty eighteen. Effective January. Okay, and is, what, what support staff will support the interim board? Uh, through the speaker, there is a project team under uh, David Jollymore within my structure that will support the interim board, as well as clerks, as well as the CMO off uh, the city manager's office too. And, and will additional support staff be required once the full time board is in place? 
We will continue with the project team until uh, second quarter of uh, 2018, and then it should sustain. And can uh, any one of Dino Chiesi, Linda Robinson, or Stephen Taylor be on the final board, the official board? Through, through the speaker, there was an amendment to one of the motions that stated that uh, if they were part of the process to review any of the applications coming in for a permanent board, uh, they would not be eligible to, eligible to be part of the board. So what if they recuse themselves? They from can the, be part of the board. So, so if they, they can be, okay. Yes, they can. And then um, what else? I have one more question. Oh, uh, why is it? So this, this mentions the chair of the Toronto TTC, uh, Chair of Build Toronto, Chair of Public Library, and what about uh, the Parking Authority? Why is why is there no placeholder for the Parking Authority? Through the Chair, we actually uh, reviewed uh, the actual. We actually looked at the skill set of the of the individual folks within the uh, the actual advisory committee that we had. We looked at uh, a number of councillors that we'd want on the board, and basically, it came out to seven people were sufficient for this board at this uh, for this interim board at this point in time. Okay, thank you very much. <clears throat> thank you, Councillor Kelly. Oh, thank you, Speaker. Uh, my eyes go. Uh, to recommendation number three and uh, 13. And uh, I'm going to ask a number of questions uh, on uh, the uh, information contained on recommendation 13, and these are to the uh, uh, CCO. Uh, based on uh, the personal experience that I've had in the past, I want to be able to get a a more accurate sense of what we may be looking forward uh, to. Um, the key here is uh, to rescind or amend the current delegations of authority for real estate matters as required. Now, the TTC at one point wanted to move its headquarters from Bathurst up to York Mills and Young. How would that have been affected had uh, the reorganization been in place at that time? York Mills, what did I say? You said from Bathurst. From Bathurst, that's where the headquarters is. No, Davisville. Davisville? Sorry. Bathurst at Davisville. <laughs> okay. Oh, Davisville and Young. Davisville and Young, it's the yards. It's the yards on Bathurst. Oh, okay. No, the head office, yes. Excuse us. Now. <laughs> How would that how would that decision have been affected if this organization had been in place at that time? Through the speaker, um, I would say that today we're actually having conversations with the TTC actually on their office requirements, right? So I, I would actually say that this organization going forward, it would actually work with the TTC and look at what the requirements are and look at it from a city perspective overall and look at the opportunity to actually look at what they need, and actually look at further optimization and co-location with other groups, too, to see if there's an opportunity to do so. Oh, uh, and so, presumably, uh, if, if the TTC didn't like the end result, uh, is there an appeal process to council, or must they live with uh, um, the new organization's decision? Uh, through the speaker, there is uh, definitely uh, conversations and reviews that will happen between what the requirements are for TTC and this organization. The role of this organization is to enable them to deliver their program and what this organization I would hope would bring was different value across the city as to what the opportunity could do from a city-wide perspective that TTC may not see. With the Toronto uh, Police Services, um, there is a, a a recommendation by many that they move out of their large divisional headquarters into smaller um, units that are sprinkled throughout the division. Um, how would you be a part of that conversation? Through the speaker, I actually am a, I'm actually part of those conversations today. We're engaged with uh, police and looking at what their requirements are and looking at what the opportunity is for further co-location or cohabitation across the city. So they're already having those conversations with us. Now, do they... Uh, they're working within the present system, is that correct? They work with a lot of the uh, real estate activities uh, with, with uh, police are done within the structure that we're talking about, yes. 
uh, exhibition place. Um, recently, a hotel was constructed on the site uh, and a Raptors training facility as well. Would you um, be involved in that sort of uh, real estate transaction where you presumably you have, I don't know, long-term leases? Um, through the speaker, I would say we would be, and we would actually have had the, the discussions up front as to what the requirements were for the exhibition place and actually support them and enable their program delivery. Toronto Parking Authority. Let's say they, uh, they want to uh, develop, not just develop their sites, but perhaps add uh, additional street parking. Would you be involved in uh, the street parking uh, no. uh, initiative, or would it just be more concerned with developing the, uh, the large sites that they have uh, in various parts of the city? So, so through the speaker, our role in this organization is to support the, uh, the, the actual buildings and land. We're not talking about streets per se. If they needed support, they would obviously use the appropriate city organizations to do so. And finally, parks, forestry, and recreation. What would you have in mind that they may want to do that they would need uh, your advice? Through the speaker, uh, what we've actually had dialogue with parks around some major city building requirements that they have around some of their community centers. And this organization would support them in some of the, the actual infrastructure required. This organization would also support some of the leases that Parks has also. And that dialogue is happening with them as we speak. Okay, that was your last question. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Fletcher. Be nice. Thank you, Speaker. I just want to follow up on a couple of the questions that they were excellent questions from uh, Councillor Kelly. Thank you for those, Councillor. Um, when we're the TTC headquarters uh, example and the other examples, I got the impression that that would not be actually coming to Council as a final product or coming to Council with milestones. Uh, is that the case? Or would you simply be going off and finding that and then have delegated authority and building that? Uh, through the speaker, some of the major projects that, like the office modernization program today, we've actually brought that to council to look at all the corporate office space. My expectation is that when we're looking at a citywide review of city building overall and office space, we would come back to council for approval. So for the TTC, let's say there was a TTC headquarters, uh, the site, the model, whether there be residential on top or simply uh, two or three stories of whatever, um, that would come back here. So would you come at all and get a mandate or a framework ahead of time for the city building that you intend to do for our major okay. boards and agencies? So, through the speaker, our intent is to come back with a long-term plan that would actually stipulate what you just said, Councillor Fletcher, with uh, elements of priorities around whether it's office space or other requirements for city building. And uh, that would incorporate some of the, uh, whether it's certain programs like TTC or others. So for a large agency like TTC or uh, that they would come back or you would set a framework for what you're looking for and then report back and get the council authority or at least give council that information in case it was a really poor decision. I guess what I'm getting at is there oftentimes council is quite wise in its uh, decision making when we're looking at a whole number of uh, different parts of uh, a project. Through the so I don't want to lose that part in turning that over in, in centralizing the, the uh, operation. So through the speaker, our expectation would be to come back to council and get approval for the overall plan, strategic plan, that would incorporate what you just said. So in the past, we've had, uh, I mean, I've lived through build and I've lived through invest and I've gone through TEDCO and I've gone through TPLC. We've had, there's, it's been quite tumultuous. Are you planning to, uh, and let's give the parking authority, that if there's properties that, it, planning's identifying areas as an intensifying area, that that would be something that the parking authority would be looking at in adding more parking. How do you see that relationship through your new department? 
through uh, the speaker, we would be working with parking on their requirements and understanding their needs and actually building that into the overall business plan this organization would manage across the city. And so for the new police offices, and I know in our division, we're the first out the gate to try to amalgamate, amalgamate 54 division and 55 division, and then look for, what are they called? The um, satellite offices here and there throughout very, very large area. Um, the process isn't really clear to me. It does look, it, there isn't a clear process. What would that look like under your model compared to what we currently have? So through the speaker, what we'd be doing with police in particular, we'd be working with that organize, with the organization, understanding what the requirements are, short term, long term, build that in the overall city plan, meaning citywide plan of real estate, and come back to council for approval and also work with the local councillors in those areas because that is actually a critical part of the dialogue and collaboration that we want to make sure we have. And so when would council see the first pass at here's the process that's being used for a pretty significant amalgamation? This is the way of the future apparently. So what would, how would you introduce that model or what you're doing uh, to city council? Through government management, directly to council? At what point would you think of doing that? Uh, through, the, through the speaker, we actually have some engagement models already built into the plan that we put forward today in this report. What we're going to be doing in Q1 of 2019 is bringing the long-term plan, that 10-year plan that I talked about okay. through the 10-year, and actually demonstrate and have it by priorities and get approval. And you also are can be engaged in strategic acquisitions. Is that correct? That's correct. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Carroll. Oh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, just quickly, building on, on bo both my colleagues, Councillor Kelly and, and Councillor Fletcher, uh, I think they're, they're both trying, to, attempting to make it real, to take, take what is a, uh, a very sort of vision speak report and make it real, how will we describe it? And, and to me, the most real example of, I think, where, where Councillor Fletcher was trying to take us from, can you help this agency with their one purpose, a head office? What if they're multi-purposes? And to me, the best example is, is uh, uh, the bus base at, at Young and Eglinton. Under build, um, we can declare it surplus, they can sell it, and then we're done. Under your agency, uh, if, if, if the local councillor has a need in the area, if, but if the city also has a need, and if the private sector has an interest, then we're talking about any number of things that can all happen on this key piece of property. Um, do we all have an ability to inform that board of all those needs? What would be our process to inform the board of this new agency that there's more than one wonderful thing you could do here and that we'd like to see them all? Uh, how will we get that word to, to the board as, they, as they're looking at a holding? Through the speaker, uh, and, I'll, and I'm going to go through a bit of a process right now. We have client relationship management roles that we're creating that will work with counselors, that will work with all the program owners, that will build that integrated plan that you referred to. And let's assume that there's a site that we want to build on and that's a community hub per se. This organization would be working with your appropriate stakeholders, whether they're counselors or program owners, and bringing that together and working with the folks to solidify what that design will look like and actually work and actually lead that actual uh, city building requirement. So there will be a, this, so, and this information would go to their board, but it would be, but it would actually come back to council for approval of something like this, a community hub of this nature. Right, so that, so that hubs do become possible here where they never were underbuilt. Absolutely. I, I liken it to the, uh, the sushi restaurant where the tray's moving too fast. And for the local councilor, this thing goes by and we finally found a place we can build a TTC headquarters, but, there's room for a childcare in there, oh, it's gone. We, we don't have to worry about that under this model. Absolutely not, we will, we'll, we will be fine with this model based on the integrated approach that we have citywide. Right, right, okay, then, then I'm ready to go. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you. Councillor Shiner. Well, I appreciate all the questions that I've had, they've been great. So Josie, currently, Build Toronto had a role which started off 
disposing of real estate. And it role expanded under the current management to do and to incorporate some city building as best it could. Example, the Tippett Road development or the 505 Richmond development and others. My colleague, Councillor Carroll's question was a very good one. What's going to happen? Do the councillors have to bring it up? Do the agencies have to bring it up? So can you extrapolate a little further as to the vision that this organization is supposed to do in bringing those plans together as compared to how the divisions are working independently right now? Through the speaker, what this organization will be doing through, the, uh, through their client relation managers is working with every councillor and every program owner and understanding what their plans are and then looking at this and looking at where they could do harmonize the plans overall from a city perspective. Look at where the opportunity is to create that hub that may, people may not see it in specific plans. This organization will have the lens that we do not have today. So it is up to the parks division to have a parks plan, to the fire division to have a plan Program. for they need, for uh, children's services to have a plan, for the parking authority to have a plan, and for this agency then to work to help bring those plans collectively to fruition? They, uh, the, the groups that you mentioned, Councillor, would have and their, others. their program plans. Yes. And, the, and what we would be doing with this organization is trying to look at an integrated plan as to how we can unlock land belly and use it as best as we can. Right, but together. Each of the divisions have their own plan. They're independent. So we're going <laughs> we're going to create a consolidated plan and one that is actually citywide and look at where the priorities are citywide. But this is a service delivery agency, is Correct. it not? It's to deliver the service that the in that the divisions currently need in regard to their real estate uses. Am I correct? correct? That is correct. And it's to best utilize the city's assets by trying to work comprehensively with all the necessary divisions when a site is being reviewed. Is that correct? Absolutely. And then if there is land that is considered surplus to continue down the process that it has under Build Toronto to then look at the development potential on that and then to market that for the revenue. It will still have that process. But if the city wishes to look at community centers and affordable housing and individual uh, initiatives like that and gives that as part of the mandate for Build for this new organization, then that's their requirement to do. That is part of the requirement, yes. So it's to carry out the collective service of dealing with the city's real estate and its real estate and, and property needs in a collective manner. Correct. It's huge. It's, a, it's an important mandate, yes. It's going to be very demanding and strategically very important then to make sure that everyone starts off trying to work collectively on this. Absolutely. It's a, it's a cultural shift. It's about making sure that we work together as an organization. And we, are, we have one goal. And the feedback from the individual organizations, because I know that's a, in divisions, has it been positive or negative on this, or concern or, or support? I think, through the speaker, there obviously, uh, there is all, I would say most organizations are supportive of the support that they will need, that today they do not have some of the skills that are required to do this. I'd say overall, people are a bit nervous about, it's big, right, and, and, and making sure that they can still deliver. But I'd say 90% of the folks are very supportive in making this actually work and want to be part of, of success of what this could be. So I have one minute left. Uh -oh. And the question I have for you in my one minute left, because you didn't do a presentation, is what else would you like to tell this council in my 60 seconds that no one's asked you the question of? Thank you. Uh, never had that before. I would say that this, uh, I, I want to first say that I, I compliment the organization since amalgamation, because this could not be done without getting through that point in time. So I think this organization citywide is ready for this new level of maturity and it's at the right time. And I think this organization and its public actually want that today. So if I were to say this is transformational, yes it is. Is it something that's required? I say absolutely. We have a huge opportunity to bring so much more to the public than we've been able to in my mind based on a better integrated plan. So that's what I would tell you. Thank you. That's what I wanted to ask you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Councillor Mahevic to speak. Uh, yes, thank you very much. Um, I have a motion that really I, I tried to get as an amendment to a motion that will come from uh, Councillor Cressy, but um, it, uh, 
it wasn't possible to amend his motion, so this is an alternative motion uh, that uh, basically uh, looks at the governance uh, piece of it. So um, the idea would be that uh, each of the four community council areas uh, would have uh, one member on this uh, new, uh, new board of uh, directors. And the reason why I think that's actually stronger than the other proposal, which is which is a two uh, mem sorry three members, and they may or may not be on the same uh, community council, is because you know one of the primary responsibilities of us as council at this order of government is property, is real estate. That's frankly a core part of uh, how to manage land and land use, and. Um, if I was on this board, I'd feel a little bit uncomfortable around issues, say, related to uh, land disposition in Scarborough or Etobicoke. I would probably know the downtown area a lot better, and so on and so on. So uh, this, is a, this is a request to have, um, have four uh, city councillors and each uh, municipal uh, community council area would have uh, one of them. Having said that, um, I, I am uh, supportive, I will be supporting the overall direction and staff recommendations uh, through a series of meetings and, um, and consultations. I have enough comfort in this to go forward. Um, I do have a fear though, and some of the fear might be based on, um, on my experience, frankly, of the Ontario Realty Corporation. As the councillor at the south end of the Allen Expressway, and you may remember it was Bill Davis, Premier Bill Davis, who basically said, this is the line, don't cross it, and gave instructions to sell the rest of the, to sell the properties that were expropriated south. Well, we did a number of them, but do you know that right now we still have not sold because of the Ontario Realty Corporation and the way that organization is so centralized that it just can't seem to find a way to let us be the agent to sell the remaining uh, few parcels that, that uh, are, are there and should be sold back to the residents. Um, I'm not saying in this particular case, and I have a lot of comfort in the way uh, our staff have actually managed this, and I do think that they have the big city building picture here. Uh, and so I think this could be a great possibility. That doesn't mean that we shouldn't go into this wide eyes, wide open, knowledgeable, <coughs> that if we don't have the right personnel there, and if we don't give them the right vision, and I do think they have the right vision, that it can't go sideways and it becomes something that is about the real estate on a financial basis only, and isn't about city building more broadly. I'm convinced that that's not the intent. However, institutions have ways of evolving in different directions in that. So uh, I support it wholeheartedly, and I, I frankly, I applaud the good work that, uh, that you have done in consulting and, and working with uh, councillors. That gives me a great deal of comfort. Uh, but I think it's something that we need to be continually vigilant on to make sure that it doesn't become the centralizing, real estate, financially focused only uh, organization that seems to be the case, at least from my outside observation at the provincial uh, government level. We don't want that happening here. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Thank you. Councillor Wong Tan. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. And I too would like to thank staff for all their hard work. I recognize that this project is one that requires a lot of courage. Um, this is not an easy undertaking, and certainly it is very ambitious. Uh, oftentimes you can do nothing, and therefore no one complains, and you will never get into trouble. What you are trying to do here is transformative, and that is exactly the right word, which is why I think it's, uh, it's, it's quite appropriate that it's actually in the title of the report. Um, there is a lot for us to be concerned about, simply because it is new. It is an amalgamation of a number of, uh, of agencies and a number of, uh, of, of corporate objectives. Um, but as it works right now, it doesn't. Currently, the City of Toronto is not managing its real estate assets very well. Uh, we are very much in an uncoordinated manner. Uh, we don't have clear objectives that bring us to purposeful outcomes in a timely fashion, and therefore we lose opportunities 
all the time. And when we lose opportunities like that, we actually are, are not managing uh, the, the assets of this corporation very well on behalf of the taxpayers. So I do support very much the, the general direction of where uh, the staff are going with this and, and thank them for that. I do recognize that you know ensuring that uh, we remain good stewards of these assets uh, is not just about keeping it in a holding pattern, but rather being much more dynamic and much more responsive as opportunities arise. And I don't think that we have actually done a very good job of that uh, to this date. I have some um, examples of where we could have done better, and I hope that uh, when you put together a, a corporate team with, uh, with real strong governance, we'll be able to manage those assets to bring us to the outcomes that the city would want. Outcomes including expansion of affordable housing, which we have not been very good at. Uh, we talk about it a lot, but we haven't been building it. We haven't been creative in, in how we're going to uh, maximize our assets to bring out better uh, public outcomes. Uh, we have not been uh, bringing out operationally uh, successful models of community hubs, despite all the talk of community hub space and or opportunities uh, to uh, to leverage those assets, uh, we also have not been uh, modernizing. Uh, our, our, our paper trail. It is very, very difficult to have an understanding of accountability on how decisions have been made in the past because people leave the corporation and it is very challenging to find out who has access to that lease agreement that may have been signed 25 years ago? And are there any terms of renewal? Are there any conditions that we need to be mindful of? Um, and it just seems like constantly we are reinventing the wheel, trying to play catch up when we need information and it slows things down. Um, we have had a number of asset sales in the City of Toronto in my short period of time on Council, six and a half years. Uh, asset sales, whether it's TPA parking lots, where, in, where we are in pursuit of highest and best use, which often means turning it over to developers for, uh, for a neat and tidy sum. And what we get in return for that is condominiums on podiums with no community space, no affordable housing. That cannot continue. But yet, that is exactly what we have been doing on the floor of council. On one hand, disposing assets, not actually re uh, 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 holding on to a, a community outcome. And then on the other hand, we're going to the province, telling them all the reasons why they need to do better by us to invest in affordable housing in the city. We have no credibility. There's no reason why the province should listen to us when we haven't been managing those assets very well. It's been very difficult to even get our corporation to act nimbly to take advantage of opportunities when we can buy assets and as, as a city with the ability of buying power that we have. We are able to purchase assets. We can build a land trust. We can actually be able to store some of those assets until we are in a place to be able to use it. I have some concerns around this particular corporate, uh, this particular agency. Although I feel that we have enough principles in the uh, in the direction right now that I'm not going to uh, not support it. Uh, but I would just want to be able to place it and, and voice it. The the waterfront is Toronto's most valuable real estate real estate asset uh, by every stretch of the imagination. We are a waterfront city, and we have a great partner who's been able to help us deliver some of those assets uh, in the very uh, short period of time that since they've been constituted, and that's Waterfront Toronto, including the good folks who've actually worked at Toronto Portlands Corporation. Um, I think that we have to make sure that that intellectual uh, property and history that they contain is going to be melded into the new agency and that you work together for the three-year transition period. Thank, Thank you, you very much. No applause, please. Councillor Robinson. Uh, thank you very much, Madam Chair. I just like to, again, like my colleagues, thank the staff that have done uh, extensive work on this. It's very uh, impressively executed. Um, and very well done. So thank you to the whole team that worked on this. You have a motion? I do have a motion. Um, if the clerk could place it. So great minds don't think alike. Councillor Mahavik. <laughs> 
so I guess when I met with Josie and she, uh, you know, blew me away with her presentation, I was concerned about the number of councillors that were on this board. In fact, I question whether any councillor should sit on it. Uh, if we truly want to embrace civic engagement and have the public play a role in the future of the city, uh, I think it would be wise to reduce the number of councillors. So I'm proposing... <laughs> what? Here, here. Get rid of them. Um, so I'm proposing that we actually increase the public members by one and reduce this, the sitting councillors by one. So we have the same composition, same number of members, but the configuration is two city councillors and seven public members. And again, I can't say this enough, that I ran on civic engagement. I believe if you went out and polled residents today, they would agree with me. They might even say maybe there should be only one councillor or absolutely no councillors. But um, I think we need to embrace the amazing residents we have in the city, get them involved in, in making City Hall a more efficient and effective place. And so I will just wrap up my comments by saying let's get people with the right areas of expertise around the table making these critical decisions that will really shape our future as a city and i will part on this comment of civic engagement let's embrace civic engagement by reducing the city councillors on this I, my impression is when there's a board with too many city councillors they dominate they influence of uh, their experience at speaking and and moving motions so i think it's better to have the community neighborhoods of Toronto shine through this exercise and reduce council and increase public engagement. Thank you. Councillor Fletcher. Uh, thank you. Uh, this is um, a really thoughtful and interesting debate that we're having right now. And I would agree that this has been a monumental job. It's an overhaul, it's a next step from thinking about having six municipalities, each owning all of their own property, uh, each with different agencies. And we think about this, there's just, everything is a logical step to bringing things together. This is a kind of final step from amalgamation and having thousands and thousands of properties under dozens and dozens and dozens of jurisdictions and governance relationships. So we have a governance relationship that's being proposed that it, we're debating here, what council's relationship would be to the new entity, uh, how many councillors there would be, and what the staff relationship would be with the new entity. Kristen, uh, Councillor Wong Tam has talked about what she's seen. I have seen a lot from the breakup of TEDCO to invest Toronto, to build Toronto. And as uh, someone said, build Toronto, we surplused all the property, said go and sell anything. Uh, then we had to take that back because that was just too wide a net that got cast there. We had nothing left. So uh, one of the kind of trepidations is that we'll get into just disposal of assets because we don't have a lot of money and there's a lot of pressure on us to just sell everything. But what if we had sold that site earlier or just gotten rid of that site where we've got Evis Phoenix? There's where Bike Share <coughs> is today on Dundas, a perfect spot, perfect size for them to bring all those bikes all over Toronto. That was just going to be fire sailed by Build Toronto years ago, one of the small sites that was surplused, and we would have had four condos there, but we would have nothing that works for the city. Our land often works for the city, or it works for incubation, or it works for low uh, market value, it works for new organizations. It's part of just the ever-growing and exciting part of being in a city in nurturing creativity and having a place we say that can go there yeah. rather than thinking let's just dispose of it because once it's gone in this market it's completely gone and I want to distinguish that earlier time of build Toronto to today's time of build Toronto where the thoughtful city building lens has been put on it 
and we are very carefully bringing our lands and our expertise into creating something more from what we own, bringing people to what we own with a vision. So that's why I'm convinced that I can support this because I see this as a further direction. I also want to say one of the things that is frustrating is there doesn't seem to be, because of all our agencies, we've got housing, we've got TTC, we've got parking authority, we've got so many different agencies that have their own, TPLC many, that have their own, they call it their own lands. They might be, but technically, you know, they're still all the cities. That's how I hope we all see that. And it's frustrating sometimes that there's no accountability back into the city. That when the city's going in a certain direction, we have intensification, we have city building plans, we have affordable housing, we have density, that the thoughts and ideas that we get at times don't mesh with that. I have to see a very, very, very strong relationship with senior staff, and I do see that through the CCO, through the DCM, in this new model. Because that is one of the things that simply doesn't exist at this point or is very hard to get to. And when we look at the TTC going to build their headquarters, we're doing it. Or we look at someone going to build something that's two stories when we know we have a great need for housing. That that has to be the way of the past. That's the old way. But we also have to make sure that we keep our property working for the city and not be simply selling it off. I think I've been convinced that's not the direction here, so I will be supporting this report. Thank you. Councillor Kelly to speak. Uh, thank you, Speaker. Um, like the people who have preceded me, uh, uh, I will be supporting uh, this initiative, um, but not without um, posting some warning signals. Uh, we all agree with the principle of de-siloing uh, the city. We uh, all understand the, uh, the consequences of having the city's services to uh, each other and to the public uh, siloed in a way that um, it produces, um, if not an ineffective uh, response by the, the city, it certainly it reduces the potential effectiveness uh, of uh, the delivery of city services, again, to the uh, residents and uh, to ourselves. But, Speaker, there are three ways that this agency can interact with the, uh, the uh, organizations it's going to coordinate. One is it will respond to their initiatives. And I think that in most of the answers that the CCO gave to my questions, um, it was that, that relationship that was featured, that the organization, the proposed organization, will respond to initiatives coming from uh, various uh, departments uh, and uh, agencies, boards, and commissions. But there's something else that um, is potentially there as well, and that is the potential of the new organization to initiate um, activity. Uh, and that's perhaps where friction might uh, might uh, be generated. And thirdly, the other way of working with uh, these uh, other parties uh, is uh, by harmonizing procedure. And harmonization, Speaker, is a very easy word to pronounce. But having chaired the Planning and Growth Management Committee, when we were harmonizing the signed bylaw, when we were harmonizing uh, the various uh, bylaws of the city, I can tell you that's a very awkward process. Uh, and uh, I think that would have to be done with uh, a certain sensitivity. And finally, we've just, we've just uh, hired, I think, an innovation officer. Uh, and I would be interested to see what the relationship would be between an innovation officer 
uh, and this organization as it's been presented to me. So, Speaker, those are my remarks. Uh, I will not be supporting the, uh, the uh, amendments to the board, and I, there is a certain amount of sympathy I have for Councillor uh, Robinson's belief that there perhaps shouldn't be any councillors on this board. Um, and, but as it's projected right now, I think we should work with the composition of the board, support this initiative, but uh, let, let the CCO know that um, this is going to be uh, an, potentially an awkward, uh, maybe divisive uh, exercise, and that great diplomacy is going to have to be uh, uh, displayed uh, right from the get-go. Thank you. Okay, members of council. Oh, Councillor Carroll. I wonder if we, we want to move just to complete this item. There are a few speakers left. Okay, there's a motion by Councillor Carroll that we complete this item only. All in favor? Carried. Okay. Can we get the key items done? So maybe some of the members can take their names off. Councillor Cressy? Idea. Motion. Councillor Cressy, you're up next. Uh, thank you, Speaker, and, and I will keep my comments brief. I have a motion if it can be put on the screen. Uh, as a start, it seems like there's a great deal of conversation around the board composition. Uh, just for clarity, my motion is to maintain the existing board composition as it's proposed with nine members, six citizen members or public members, but to clarify that the two council representatives and the mayor, his or her designate, uh, that they would all come from different community councils. That's all. Uh, and I, the reason for that for me is very clear, that we want a real estate framework that will stand the test of time. We want a real estate framework that will ensure representation from the whole city. And we want a real estate framework so that whether we have a mayor that is way to the right or way to the left or right in the middle, it doesn't matter. We have a framework for governance that works. And I think that's the intention here. Uh, I'll, I'll keep a, just say a few words here. Uh, our, our city's real estate is our most valuable asset. That I think we all know and we all agree. And it's enormous with 24 agencies, boards, and corporations controlling real estate and doing real estate deals uh, across more than 8,500 properties and valued at nearly $30 billion. It's enormous. And right now, we have a lack of coordination around that. And as Councillor Wong Tam mentioned, when we do deal with property, it's often on a highest and best use criteria, and the highest and best use isn't seen through the lens of city building objectives. What this will lead us to is a clear, clear prioritization and list of priorities to determine what highest and best use for our city really means. When it means parks and public realm, community centers and community services, shelters and affordable housing, jobs and employment, that's what highest and best use really looks like. And it does so while ensuring direct accountability for real estate transactions to this council. Uh, and so, you know, we have in front of us Finally, I think a big move and an important one which will help our city. We have a proposal that's been brought forward in terms of the process that is focused on getting it right as opposed to just getting it done by having an interim board, then having a three-year incubation period which excludes places like Toronto Community Housing and Hydro. And so this is not easy. This is the type of work that I think delivers huge results in the long term for the residents of our city but it takes a lot of work from our staff. Uh, and they've rolled up their sleeves, and I want to recognize their work there, as well as the work of representatives from all our agencies, boards, and corporations who've been part of this. And so I'll just close to say that uh, I think this is, it's long past time we take this step, and I think we can do a much better job as our city of utilizing our land to service our residents, and this will do so. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Carroll to speak. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I'll, I'll, I'll make it uh, uh, quick as well if I can, because I'm not moving another motion. There are motions before you with respect to membership. And uh, the one that, uh, that says that we broaden the council membership a little bit uh, does not make me nervous. In fact, uh, it comforts me. Because this, uh, this organization, when it brings forward to its, uh, its uh, proposals, it's going to have to have credibility with each of our communities. Uh, it's going to have to have perspective for each of our communities. And 
I, I think, I think as, as much as we like to sometimes say, let's engage the community, or in fact hand it over to them altogether, our expectation of this community, uh, in my own questioning, I think I really only put in layman terms what, in a funny way, all of you are asking all evening long. And I likened it to the sushi restaurant where the conveyor belt's just moving too fast. You don't have time to go to every committee meeting. We do everything through committee right now when we want to build something uh, for city use into it. When we're just selling it off, we've been sending it off to build. But when when you want, when you think there's a broader community purpose for something, often you're here in this chamber by the time you find out about something. And the opportunity just sails by, recorded vote is gone. Why didn't we put a child care center in there? Why aren't we exploring the concept of a daytime seniors drop-in? Why aren't we meeting some of the needs that we know are, are needed throughout society, let alone the city of Toronto? And isn't this the best place, the richest and largest city with the most assets? Why aren't we, why aren't we exploring those things that we know are the future needs of this city? Uh, this organization, uh, it's a bold promise and I hope it comes true, but they're, they're actually offering to do that. I showed a slide when we came back from the trade mission of what I saw in Tama Plaza in Japan, where you got home from work, and as you came up the escalator, there was the seniors drop-in where your, your uh, elderly that is in your care spent the day. There is the child care center, but there too are also the private sector amenities. There's the dry cleaner. There's the medical offices that, in fact, are getting a little bit of a below market rent because you want to bring them into a hub. And, and yes, there is the affordable housing above us and indeed some social housing as well. And yet, beside it, still room for market value and, and in fact, tourism. All in something that started out really as a city asset because it was a giant outmoded long ago industrialized train station. And as the transit got leaner and, and that design was possible to be reined in, it all got to be used for public purpose. But many, not one, not just saying can we add a thing, but how many things can we serve for what is now this intensified place? And if it works for us, then it can, can it go from being a Toronto model to a Canadian model? We can be experimenting with those things here. But, I hate to say it, but I don't think that an all-citizen board that doesn't watch those opportunities go sliding by in this chamber again and again and again is going to focus in and realize that potential right from the get-go. And we really do, because as many of you have said, because we have missed so many of those opportunities stumbling from corporation model to corporation model, we can't afford not to be doing that from the get-go. And so I think it requires a hybrid model. And if, if there is a mandate for this term of office, if we cast our minds back to the last term of office, if there is a mandate for this term of office, not only for the mayor, but for every one of us councillors, it was to begin to get rid of those divisions, those geographical divisions that our legacy cities left us with and that have, have led to political division and make sure that big, bold moves when they make them here those big, bold moves like this agency, that there isn't the downtown, up-down, urban, suburban divide, that there is faith in this board, that it has credibility with each of those various areas, and this becomes the very vehicle that brings us all together and past those amalgamation divisions. And that's why the structure of this board is so important, and that's why I'm gonna be picking my favorite model there and making sure that we're having regional representation, political representation, and good, strong, talented, skills-based citizen representation. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Those are my comments. Thank you. Councillor McConnell. Thank you, Speaker. I don't have any motions. I will try and speak as quickly as I can. I, I brought through my questions the fact that this agency is about city building. Um, it is really not about budget building, it is about city building. It is not about uh, getting rid of land, but utilizing land for the public good. And I think that when we look at that, it's very important um, that we recognize some of the pieces that came forward. One of the discussions 
was about the Portlands and the role that Waterfront Toronto needs to have as a leader of the three orders of government. I think that's understood. But the interim uh, 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 governing uh, uh, body, um, their job is really to develop uh, um, the, uh, the future. And I would suggest um, that the issue of governance, that the, that the experts on governance are sitting in this room. So I would be very hesitant to remove uh, members of council uh, from this discussion, because in the long run, uh, we may have um, a board that is not as needy in terms of, of, of members of council. But at the moment, the main structure of their work will be around designing the future. So from my perspective, if it's going to be transformational, if it's going to be collaborative, if it's going to be uh, engaged with the public, it needs to have those people whose expertise, and I think we should never uh, 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 call ourselves short. I mean, I think that we have those expertise, that's what we do day after day after day, and I believe uh, that we do it very well. So I'd ask that we not reduce the number, uh, but rather that we move forward with the staff report, uh, looking at some of the other options of, uh, of trying to get a bit of uh, diversity in, in, into our groups. I know that I'm very happy that uh, Dino Chiesi has agreed uh, to run this board. I, I think we should be thanking our lucky stars. But I'm not sure that he would know necessarily how to manage 54 division uh, conversation about uh, amalgamating with 55 division. He will need those expertise around the table who will help uh, 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 pull through what the priorities of this council are. And with that, Madam Chair, I would say uh, good for the staff. It's a great report, and we should all support it. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Perks to speak. I'm just sharing my thoughts with the mayor right now, but perhaps I'll share them with council. Um, I, I'm really struggling on this one. They, I, I, first of all, I want to commend the mayor uh, this, the, for uh, coming up with this idea and, and driving it home to bring together all the various real estate departments in the city. It is just ridiculous, as, as the mayor has said, that we have, I, I forget, 17 or, or 19 24, I mean, we've lost count, different group, 27 different groups in the city who manage real estate. And I want to commend the mayor on, on recognizing that problem and attacking it vigorously. I also uh, want to commend the staff who've worked on it. I'm sure all of you have had the same experience I have, which is the, the chief corporate officer and her team have been extraordinarily generous with their time to sit with us, work through our issues, and try to come up with the best possible proposal. I, I also uh, am right now uh, the beneficiary of this new kind of thinking. You may recall a few council meetings ago, you directed city staff to work on creating a model hub in Parkdale, bringing together the Parking Authority, Build Toronto, the Toronto Public Library, Parks and Recreation, uh, SDFA, uh, Artscape, and uh, half a dozen uh, local community agencies, all in different buildings right beside each other, all about to do renovations separately. And this is very much the model we should be undertaking. But there are two or three issues that, that I have been concerned about since the beginning of this, which give me great pause. The, the largest of those is the idea of, of putting this out into an arm's length agency, rather than having it as a, a division of the City of Toronto that would report say through the Government Management Committee. Having it, to, to put my concern in the simplest terms, two words, Ferris wheel. <laughs> you will all recall what can happen when we have an arm's length real estate body where a couple of members of council are appointed uh, at the behest of the local, admi uh, the, the administration of the day uh, and all of a sudden, things can go terribly, terribly, terribly wrong, and City Council and the public have to invest months and months of effort uh, in a very divisive and, and high-profile fight to stop something that is not controlled directly by this council, but is ridiculous and is off the rails. 
I wanted to avoid that kind of problem, not with this administration. I don't think Mayor Tory has a particular affection for Ferris wheels or, or I see him shaking his head very, yes. But, but for the future, we're establishing the long term for how we're going to manage assets owned by the public, owned by the people we represent, but not directly controlled by the people they elect. And that for me is just one bridge too far. I agree absolutely that consolidating our real estate holdings and, and as the CCO said in answers to her question and the mayor and I were just talking about a moment ago, having a very clear mandate about city building, not a mandate about creating cash or uh, having a dividend paid to council. I, I am, I'm delighted with those aspects of it. I really do think that, that this new configuration will do great good for the city. And again, I want to commend the mayor and the CCO and her, her team on, on the work. I just, I just, I'm, I cannot get myself over the bridge of having it in, in one of these arm's length agencies with minimal supervision from council or maybe just a few of us who are appointed and will not, even if, if we have the Councillor Mahevich's motion pass, will not give the kind of accountability to those the people who elect us to manage their assets that, that would give me comfort. So as I said, it's kind of 50-50, but I'm afraid I just can't get over the bridge and support this one. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Peruzza. Yes, Speaker. Thank you so much. I'm not going to support this either, and I'll be uh, um, I'll be as brief as I can be. Um, I've seen this I've seen this particular play uh, several times now. I've, I saw it here uh, when we basically created uh, uh, what we call now a built Toronto. That's the, the built Toronto. I saw it at the province when the province. Uh, during my time created the Ontario Realty Corporation. Not that I have a great deal, not that I don't have a great deal of faith in the current players, or this council for that matter, but what you do today, or, 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 or Josie, or Dino, or uh, whom I have a, a, a fundamental respect for, someone I, I worked uh, with in the past, and, and someone I know who's very, very capable. But the reality is that those aren't the only people that get to control this exercise. Once you have tra transferred the family jewels, all of them, you know, the crown, the rings, the necklaces, the whole lot. Thank you for clarifying. And, when, and once you have transferred those jewels to basically an organization, a group, that is no longer responsive to you, now, I heard Councillor Carroll talk about, oh, they're there, they're going to be at the front end, they're going to be doing the, oh, the housing, the home building, the daycare, the this and the that. that that's hogwash. That's, that's as naive as it gets. That's putting the little baby to sleep. That's going, ni na na na. What's na na na? Right? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But, but once you have done that, once you have done that, it is basically fundamentally gone. And then what they do with it, well, they do with it. Because you, you as a local representative, as someone who's been elected to speak for a local neighborhood, will no longer have a say in that process. That's a fact. You didn't have a say when Bill Toronto wanted to do this or that. I know that, 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 you know, when the Re Ontario Realty Corporation went out there and did stuff, they just did stuff on their own with very, very little accountability. Yeah, for now, you might be getting the right people there and all very, very good people, right? But the agency outlives you. It outlives the people you put there now. And once you've got that train going, you ain't never going to stop it. You ain't never going to bring it home. But what you will have done, you will have transferred the family jewels. All of them. Hook, line, and sinker. 
and you will have given it to a, a group of people who basically, for a period of time, are not accountable to pretty much anyone. I don't think that that's, that that's the way to do it. I, I think that there might be a form to be able to do it. I think that there might be a, a way to bring, you know, the family jewels in-house and, and have and create, a, create an administrative uh, um, process by which you do have a say, by which you do have some control, by which local neighborhoods that have a great many needs, some of them have been mentioned, such as daycare and housing and and uh, and yes, be be sort of you know um, up front there on something that's going on in some neighborhood, and somebody's already thought about it as as opposed to being somewhat <laughs> reactive. But this model has been tried. This model has been tested, and this model has failed. It hasn't failed once. From my perspective, it hasn't failed twice. It's failed at all three levels, each and every time. I think it would be quite naive for us to say, let's recreate it one more time, because this time we're going to get it right. And it's, it's going to be done right. Um, I, I think there's a way to do it. I think you have, uh, you have the players. Um, I think you have some very, very good people lined up to be able to do something like this but not quite this way, and I'm not going to support it uh, uh, as is in front of us today. Thank you. Councillor Shiner. So, Madam Speaker, I, I think the very first thing that I have to do, and we have some of my colleagues did, is really give a tremendous round of appreciation to the Josie and all of her staff and David and that have worked so hard to try and figure out what to do with the city's real estate and the best way to improve upon the current models. The work that they put in in a short period of time has been absolutely phenomenal and to try and get members of council that generally like something like this is so hard to do. Now, when I hear from Councillor Perks, and when I hear from Councillor Peruzza, they're not wrong. Councillor Peruzza is right. We formed Build Toronto, and in my opinion, it failed. A colossal failure. Councillor, <laughs> please. It failed, and those of you that were here saw me took issue with it when it failed on the relocation of EVAs when it failed on the selling of the land, which we didn't even know about, with the old bus shelter in Councillor McConnell's area, was ridiculous. It didn't work well at all. But as my colleague said, the current method isn't working, where the parking authority sells a property and participates in the highest and best use of the return on it. That also fails. Where the parks department can't find land because it gave up 28 Bathurst Street and then wanted it back. Where we have a heritage building in downtown Toronto that had so many restrictions on it on Richmond Street that no one could develop it, but we are now. So to be able to find something that's going to work is hard. And I'll tell you that it's been brought back. Because three years ago, I would have said no, no, a thousand times no to what Bill Toronto was doing to us. But you at council changed the management, bringing in a new CEO. You put me on the board there to work with them which is, I appreciate the opportunity, the workload I question. But the question I continue to say a number of times, and I've said it is, give the organization the mandate that you want it to do and the city building initiatives that you want it to do and let a performance work without a whole bunch of councillors on there that are more concerned with their own initiative or in their area. I believe there should be councillors on it, and I think the current number of three which is what the mayor proposed was reasonable. I support him having his own designate on there, and I support the initiative to make sure that you don't get three from Etobicoke or North York or Scarborough, because that's reasonable. But if you put private sector members on there that you really want to have a cross-section of those that understand community needs, that understand environmental issues, that understand parks, that understand development, 
that understand the whole cross-section of initiatives. You have to let them do their work. You can't dominate it with members of council. And the members that are there now have been learning this over the last couple of years. It does have amazing opportunities to do things, to incorporate the needs that are there where we're just scratching the surface that we did on Tippett Road when we brought parks in and we tried to deal with the other issues we had to deal with and moving a, a business across the road or where we dealt with Richmond Street and all the needs in it. It's starting to focus. But Parks Department, parking needs it. Uh, the library is asked to be involved. TTC needs land. You need someone that can look at all of your assets comprehensively. Understand your city building initiatives. Look at what you really want to have and deliver what you want. Because split up into these multiple agencies with billions of dollars worth of real estate, and the method we have it now has failed tremendously. It's been a bigger failure, Councillor Perusa. Councillor Shiner, now? why are you speaking to Councillor I want to, I like him. It's been a bigger <laughs> failure through you, Madam Chair, to Councillor Perusa. Our current model is a bigger failure than Bill Toronto was. And it's not because our staff don't want to do well. It's because they don't work together. There's no methodology to work together. And that's what this is trying to do. It's trying to put the arms around the different agencies and slowly bring them in to help them coordinate their needs so they can deliver for you what you need based on the business plans that each agency has and their needs. This organization is supposed to be there to deliver those needs for the citizens of Toronto and for you. So based on that and the recent track record, I'm prepared to support this wholeheartedly with the one amendment that I have from my councillor Cressy to at least make sure that the members are split across the city and give it some chance to get up and operating as it continues to come back. Thank you, But keep your Shepard. eyes on it, see what it's doing, and make sure you get the right people onto those boards that are there to represent Th your needs. Thank you. Deputy Mayor Menning Wong to speak. Yeah, thank you. Um, I did have a few comments. I, firstly, I wanted to comment on what Councillor Pruitt said about um, uh, Bill Toronto being a failure, not listening to what the community wants. So I did sit on the board, and and there was some criticism about you know people from the private sector uh, just wanting to maximize value. I can tell you from my experience, and I, I think the Councillor Shiner would agree with me, that the that the board members, although they're experienced in real estate, desperately want to make the city happy. So they're not they. They, and I think the new board members, whoever they are, the, these folks come from the private sector. They know who the shareholder is, and, and they're not, they weren't just interested in profit maximization, they were interested in city building. So this idea that, that Build Toronto failed, or that the new organization will fail, uh, I think what Councillor Proust says is completely wrong. I, and I, I agree, sec, my second point is, I agree with Councillor Shiner um, to, the, to the extent that uh, the new real estate entity has to figure out what it wants to be. So Bill Toronto started out to be a development company that was supposed to be about uh, increasing value for our properties, maximizing that value and putting money in, in, our, in the pockets of the city so that we could spend it on things. However, as time went on, that kind of changed. So it this, this city building thing started to creep in and local communities, local ward councillors uh, tried to take away from that what would be a larger dividend, they tried to take first. And so we as an org, Build Toronto or the new entity has to come to ground or we have to give them instructions on what it is we want. Do we want profit maximization or do we want the money siphoned off into Councillors' pet projects, or this project, or that project, we have to we have to settle on that. So, uh, someone like me, I'd like to see the money go into the city's bank account as a dividend, and then then this council decides on it, rather than the local councillor decides that it's his piece of land and he wants this, that, and the other thing. I I think we need to have that discussion. The third thing is, um, I will give you know I will give credit to the staff in as much as. It, this was a horrible job for them, trying to 
Um, they look like they were having fun. Yeah. They, well, firstly, they had to meet with every single counselor. Think oh about the. Think God. about how much fun they had doing that. <laughs> and then, and then they had to deal with all these departments that were res that are that are fundamentally resistant to change. And so the real challenge is not this first step is only a small incremental step. It's only m merging Bill Toronto and TPLC. It is basically undoing what David what David Miller did when he was elected mayor. He broke it up. And it's this is really only a small step. We still have real estate departments in the TTC, police service, parks and rec, you name it, across the whole organization. And they're not really expert at what they do. And they all think their property is theirs and it's not the city's. So we need to, the next step is really important. It's more important than this step, really. And it's to bring all these organizations together. Um, and, and the other thing that, that, that needs to be done is, um, I asked, I asked, I asked uh, Josie this question. I said, so how many, throughout this whole process, how many, because we are trying to, you know, you talk about the hundreds of people that do real estate transactions in this organization. And I asked her, um, while it's not the complete, it, it is not the only thing that we need to pay attention to, but through this process, how many people did we, are we gonna, you know, cut down because we have so many people doing this? And she said 10. I think we need to do better than 10. Um, so, to, yeah, so it's 10 out of about 180 people that are involved. And so I think we can do better than that. People that are, Peter, throughout the whole organization, there are about 3,000. That's, that's including the people that manage properties. There's huge opportunity to find savings in this. I know the mayor talked about this when he was getting elected. Surely we, we shouldn't have so many people doing this. And I agree with him. So I think the next steps are really important, but this is a good first step. Um, I'm going to support the staff recommendations with regard to the board comp composition because I think they got it right. Thank you. Councillor Lee. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. I wasn't intending to speak, but uh, after listening to one of my colleagues uh, speak, I thought I would say a few words myself. First of all, uh, I've been a councillor for over 10 years now, and uh, I see a lot of uh, real estate that is not uh, maximized in terms of uh, its use, and uh, different organizations doing their own thing. So I provided uh, input to our uh, uh, chief corporate of officer, and uh, I think this uh, proposal is very supportable, and it's something to go forward with, and uh, I come, you know, commend her for the excellent work she's done up to this point. So I hope that uh, the uh, process will continue. It is important for us to all become uh, agents of change, manage change. And uh, when I hear one of my colleagues saying that uh, we failed so many times, so I'm not supporting this. You know, if it's not working, why would you not support changes to be made to make it better. Now, is it going to uh, be a smooth, complete smooth sailing all, all along the way? I think that we will be uh, seeing some uh, growing pains, but I don't think it's anything that can be overcome. So I fully support the staff proposal to move forward and make uh, the uh, real estate arm a reality. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Kerjianis. Thank you, um, Madam Chair. Madam Chair, I, I got problems with the proposal. I got problems with some of the motions. But however, at the end of the day, we got to make sure that what is in front of us that we will support. Um, I got problems when somebody stands up and says, well, I consulted with everybody, and the question gets put, did you consult with the federal government? And I'm told we consulted with the KPG, and we didn't talk to that arm of the government. That's where my problem lies. My problem lies that I was in an administration that we moved in this fashion, and once we moved in this fashion, we sold buildings and we ended up renting buildings back, and these numbers are here with us today. The staff told us that um, they um, had $14 to the cost of per square foot, and then it ended up costing the federal government 27 I was reassured, however, by staff that this was not be the case here. 
But that's not the case here today, but I'm not sure what's going to happen tomorrow or the day after this. I'm not sure if putting all our eggs in one basket is a good deal. I've seen real estate transactions that the city is trying to make and the city strikes, and I got to tell you, I am aghast, amazed. I, I am I'm choked at sometimes the, 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 the deals that the city makes. I've seen the deal that they made for my constituency office. When I was able to make my own deal in the same building, 1,900 square feet, I was paying 1,200. Along comes the city for 600. They're paying probably even more than that, but I couldn't get involved. Well, because of the, the way that we got set things up out here. Uh, unless we are sure that the person that's going to be at the head of this is an individual with, uh, that she or he has the fortitude and the guts to, to make hard decisions and then comes and presents us that, that's where the problem lies with me. I will not be supporting um, the uh, motion by uh, J uh, Councillor Robinson about one member of council and seven members of public. Um, you know, at the end of the day, if something goes wrong, we are the ones that are accountable. And if you want us to be accountable during an election or the public has questions, well, you know what? When we go door knocking at the door during a, an election or even in between, we'd we be told by um, plain language that uh, you screwed up. And although the seven public members might have made the one decision and the chair, that's where my problem lies. You can tell me that we're going to get people that know what they're doing. At the end of the day, they're not the electorate. That they're not the people that get elected. We're the ones that get elected and get um, held accountable for. I see a motion by uh, uh, Councillor Creasy, and it says two members of council, six ap appointments, uh, and uh, designated by the mayor. Well, I'm sorry. Did you say Gretzky, the guy who plays hockey? By, by Joe. By Joe. Oh. By Joe. Um, and I will tell you, I'm going to have difficulty in supporting that motion. However, I, I'm seeing a, a member by uh, Councillor Mihevic that is more palatable, that calls for three members of council and a uh, designate by the mayor. That would be something that we appoint. I um, got difficulty with the, the whole idea. However, I know that we will be going through. So I urge my colleagues, the more representatives that we do have on this board, the more accountability that we will be able to see. Um, it'd be hard to, uh, to we got to make sure that we cross all the T's and dot the I's. So if we're going to be held accountable at the end of the day for city um, assets of what we're doing, I think council members, the more council members you have on there, the better it's going to be and more more that we're able to be accountable for. Um, so I will be supporting uh, Councillor Mihavik's motion. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. So um, that's it for the speakers. Mayor will be the last speaker. Well, uh, Madam Speaker, thank you. And I apologize to members of council for just taking a couple of more minutes. But I have a lot invested in this in the sense that I think we're really trying to do uh, the right thing here. And I want to begin by saying one of the reasons I think we're at the place we are um, in terms of something that has resulted from a lot of input from a lot of people, including people in this room, is because of the work of our staff team uh, led by Josie. And I, I think it's been textbook. I mean, nothing is ever, you know, sort of perfect and you'd all, I'm sure, point to some flaws, but I think the consultation with council, uh, the consultation with people around the real estate world, including in our own world here at the city, uh, and so on has just been done very, very well. And I think it, uh, it, uh, it is deserving of a, of a real vote of accommodation to the staff. And I want to say thank you to the council as well, because my understanding is that a large number of councillors have been taken through this in advance, which again is a model for how I think we could uh, do things. And, uh, you know, we, 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 we will have accomplished this, uh, whatever the result may be in a few minutes, uh, in a lot shorter time than many other items, even though it's a very big item, because I think people had a lot of their questions answered in their offices way before we got uh, here today. I want to just quote from the report. Um, and it says here, uh, and I quote, the current state of real estate management is made up of an entangled system of governance and service delivery. And when coupled with increasing real estate demands, it poses considerable challenges to achieving city building outcomes. And I, I think that's actually a very apt paragraph to describe inadvertently where we've ended up, which can often be the case. You kind of build one thing on top of another over the years and build comes along and you had all these other agencies and, 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 and different groups all have their own uh, view. And what we're dealing with here, again, to quote the report, is a real estate portfolio uh, worth an estimated, uh, with an estimated uh, value of $27 billion. 
uh, Councillor Perutz, who called it the crown jewels. I think it's the crown jewels not so much in terms of the value of it in monetary terms. That's kind of interesting, but if you're not planning to sell it, then it doesn't really matter. What really matters is this is one of the most vital strategic assets that we have uh, in the city. And I think when you have the entangled system of governance and service delivery um, and all the demands that we have, you don't end up uh, uh, utilizing your one of your most, if not your most valuable asset, aside from people, I guess, um, in a strategic way. And I just don't know that you can drive those two together, the entangled system of governance with, I think the report actually makes reference to 24 uh, different bodies that handle real estate in some form or another. And you know, I'll come back briefly at the end to the system of governance, but in the end, I, I don't think it is something where any individual politician, of which I am one, goes to, this, to these boards that we set up and tries to deliberately sort of pump for their own parish. I think it's that it is very difficult for people who are elected uh, in positions of elected responsibility to, um, to, to sometimes create anything other than a very complicated, entangled system of uh, governance. And I think what will happen in this case, which is a blended system of governance involving both elected people and others, um, it will allow us to actually view our real estate holdings and the use to which they're put um, in a strategic way. I would pose the question to go back to something that Councillor Peruzza has said about daycare and affordable housing. Aside from one or two of the, you know, sort of I would call them episodic initiatives of build and maybe once in a blue moon the parking authority, how much daycare and how much parking authority have we got out of the current real estate system? If that's part of what we're trying to do in city building, and it goes way beyond childcare and way beyond, uh, way beyond affordable housing to a number of other things, including open space and parkland and so forth. How much of that have we got out of the current system of real estate management? I sort of look at it and see that we have a deficit in almost every one of those areas that has to do uh, with what we call uh, city building. And so uh, the report again, to quote it, says that we will apply a strategic citywide lens and drive sophisticated management practices to ensure the most effective use of real estate assets and capital dollars to benefit the city, to benefit the city. And that's not benefit financially. I mean, obviously you want to be financially prudent in how you go about this, but it's benefit the city in terms of the use to which you put this land. And I, I have one other reason for believing this could actually and, and hopefully will be a very good thing. Uh, we've heard much talk. I heard uh, in a conversation I was having just today here at council about the fact that the city never really amalgamated. And some people may say, well, it never should have amalgamated. But the fact is, once amalgamation was decided upon, the city has never really come together and sort of run itself in a way that said it's one for all and all for one. I'm less concerned about that in the context of, uh, of, of Scarborough and East York and North York in this context today. I'm very concerned about that on all the other issues where we should be trying to do things as one city. Um, and, and I will, by the way, uh, not support uh, Councillor Mahevich's motion because I don't think that that kind of allocation of the appointments makes sense. I think, though, where we haven't amalgamated as well and is in having departments work together on strategic matters very well. And this, I think, will really help that to happen. I hope so. And I can tell you, just for those who have expressed concern about this, I know it doesn't comfort you much, but as long as I'm here, I will be watching this like a hawk because I don't want to have had responsibility for creating something that's either a monster or that works worse, if there's such an expression, than what we had there now with that entangled system. Uh, so I would urge members of council to vote for this. I think it's the right thing to do. I think it's the smart thing to do. I think that we will watch it carefully to make sure it doesn't turn into any of the things that people have said it might. Um, and I think the blended governance model, as I suggest, um, is one that I think can work well uh, and can produce a much better result in terms of uh, effective use of real estate than we're seeing today. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you. Okay. So how are we voting on these motions numerically? All right. One, two, three. Okay, recorded vote. <coughs> Councillor Grisanti, please.
Councillor Crisanti, please. The motion does not carry. The vote is 16 to 22. Motion two. Motion two. Recorded vote. Councillor Crisanti, please. Councillor Crisanti, please. The motion does not carry. The vote is seven to 31. Motion three, recorded vote. Councillor Peruzza, please. I thought it was I thought it was Chrissy. The motion carries thirty-three to five. Item is amended. On favor. Co recorded vote. Oh, okay. Don't get excited. No, I mean, Jeff must go, no, 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 no. <laughs> Councillor Kelly, please. Councillor Karachanis. Councillor McMahon. Councillor Wong Tam, please. Councillor Palazzo, please. The item is amended, carries 33 to 5. All right, Councillor Carroll, you have a motion to introduce the confirming bill. I do, Madam Speaker. That leave be granted to introduce a bill to confirm to the point of the introduction of this motion, the proceedings of City Council meeting 29, uh, which includes all the mayor's key items, on May 24, 2017. <laughs> done and done. Shall leave, <laughs> shall leave be granted to introduce this bill recorded vote? Councillor Peruzza, please. Councillor McMahon, Councillor Wong Tam, Councillor Shiner, Councillor Pasternak, Councillor Davis, Councillor Perks. Councillor Cressy. <laughs> Motion to introduce the confirming bill carries 37 to 1. Shall this bill be passed and declared as a bylaw? Recorded vote. Councillor Kelly, Councillor Karajanis, Councillor Carroll, please. Councillor McMahon, Councillor Wong Tam. Councillor Matlow and Councillor Davis, please. Councillor Matlow. The motion to enact the confirming bill carries 36 to 2. Motion to recess to tomorrow morning, 9.30. And bring the coffee, please.